I've been using React now for a while and I really remember how much I struggled in the beginning. It took me about three months more than it should have taken to learn React because of a, a range of mistakes that I'm gonna be talking about in this video. Things like not knowing enough JavaScript to learning obsolete methods to resolve problems, um, too many things that um, I feel like are important to mention, I'll give you guys an outline of what I would study, what concepts and technologies I would practice if I were to start learning React again. So with that in mind, this is how I would learn React if I could start over. Before we get into the video, I just wanted to say that this video is sponsored by Brilliant. As many of you guys might know, Brilliant is an amazing platform which allows users to learn from hands-on video lectures and quizzes. They are known for having extremely high quality courses in anything related to STEM and although they currently don't have anything related to React, I believe that many of the skills you acquire in Brilliant can be very useful in your programming journey. For example, their Algorithm Fundamentals course will teach you everything you need to know to get good with algorithms and ace a programming interview or even their cryptocurrency course, which is especially important as we transition more and more into Web3. The platform is overall amazing, and if you want, um, there's a 20% discount if you use my link that will be in the description. Again, thank you Brilliant for sponsoring the video, and let's get into the video. So I wanna make this video as um, informative as possible, so I'll actually try to get straight to a point and point out exactly what I would learn in the correct order. So based on my experience, the first thing I would, I would definitely make sure that I'm comfortable with is JavaScript. Now, I'm not saying you need to be a god in JavaScript because it is pretty useless, a lot of stuff that you learn with vanilla JavaScript if, if you're working with React. For example, you don't really need to know how to alter an, an, a DOM element's um, HTML if you're using React because the whole point of using React is that you don't need to do that. However, um, there's a lot of stuff, especially with the new modern um, syntax of React that you need to be comfortable with. React was made um, pretty recently um, compared to the history of JavaScript. So most of its syntax is based on modern JavaScript. So for that reason, I feel like it would be a waste of time to spend learning um, all, all, like old, JavaScript, old ways to write JavaScript when um, in React you will mostly find yourself using stuff from ES6 up so that's something that I would definitely point out. That was an issue with me because before getting into React, I really didn't feel comfortable with stuff like promises, um, even arrow functions were kind of confusing. I didn't know what the spread operator was. So this kind of stuff or stuff that you, you don't even have to think about when you're coding React, so many tutorials out there won't mention them because they assume you already know. However, I know for a fact a lot of, of you guys watching this might not be really comfortable with this kind of syntax. So if I were to start again, and if I give can give a piece of advice for you guys, would be that um, I would practice the newer versions of JavaScript so that when I start learning and I start coding in React, um, I would at least um, not have to worry about that. The next thing I would do would be, I would spend about a week or, or even less, um, to be honest, um, just trying to absorb as much as I can about the theoretical part of React. Now this is quite annoying in my opinion. It, I do feel like um, it, it is kind of boring I'm trying to understand and the core of what React is. I know most people just want to start coding and I am I, I praise that because I also wanted to just start writing React when I started. However, I do feel like understanding why you're writing React or instead of using vanilla JavaScript is extremely important because um, it took me about a year since I, I first coded in React to actually understanding what I was doing um, because I just never took uh, a time to learn it. So I feel like it is important because um, it will save you a lot of time in the future when you're trying to learn some of the more complex uh, concepts and um, just speed up the process, which is ultimately the best thing you can do. Then I would start with the best part, which is um, actually start coding your first um, React application. What I would do would be I would open up YouTube and just search a beginner's React series. Now, I would be very careful about this. Um, I would try to find a series that was released either in 2020, 2021, or even in 2019. However, anything before that, I feel like might have some outdated and obsolete um, concepts that they might be teaching. They might even be teaching class components, which by the way, I would stay the hell out of it because 
Um, it is not used anymore. Functional components and hooks are the way to go nowadays. And I see a lot of beginners um, making this mistake and just watching a tutorial from 2017 and, and using glass components. But I wouldn't, I would use hooks, um, point and blank. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even waste time learning class components. Um, but that's what I'm trying to say, like try to watch a beginner tutorial in React um, that only teaches you the basics. So like um, how to install React into your computer, um, what are components, how to work with props, and everything related to the basics, like how to use JSX and what is the difference between JSX and HTML. All this stuff I feel like can easily be taught through a YouTube video. And I'm not saying specifically mine, uh, especially because I don't I don't believe I have a, a really amazing um, beginners react series It's something that I wanted to in the future but I don't think I have one right now so I'm just saying search one up from other youtubers that you can find a lot of really good resources out there then when you feel comfortable with a very very basic stuff just building a, like a, a good looking web page with react it doesn't even have to be that functional like it doesn't have to have buttons or anything like that um, when you feel comfortable with doing that, um, I would immediately straight up go to learn um, the use state hook. Now, a lot of guides out there will tell you to learn other stuff before getting into hooks. However, in my opinion, I, I think they're wrong. And the reason why I think they're wrong is because I feel like when you're learning, you shouldn't just follow the path that um, is ordered and based in complexity. So like you shouldn't just uh, learn like the easy stuff and continuously trying to increase in complexity. I feel like it should it should do that when you zoom out and try to look at what you're learning. However, you need to take into account that people get demotivated. So you do need to learn some stuff that is gonna give you some sort of reward in the beginning so that you don't get demotivated. And I feel like states is a good example of that because it is something that isn't too hard but at the same time, um, it will open up so many um, doors for you uh, in your React journey that I feel like it's something you should learn right in the beginning. The way I would learn states is by trying to, again, watch a tutorial on YouTube and doing a counter app and a to-do list app. Although they are very cliche, um, they are extremely useful for um, a beginner because they teach you all the basics and they're cliche for a reason, right? Um, to do The reason why everyone makes a to-do list application is because it is very helpful. So that's exactly what I would do. After getting used to states, um, I feel like you, you have enough knowledge to um, start building like full websites, right? So, so for example, a website, it doesn't have to be a complicated one, but you're able to at least build a website. And you might start wondering, how do I build a website with multiple pages? Well, at this point, I will probably start learning uh, a library like React Writer DOM, which will allow you to um, have multiple pages in React, even though React is a single page application. All it does is, depending on what route you're in, it will render different components. Um, it is a very important library out there, React Writer DOM, and I definitely recommend you learning um, around this point in your um, learning journey. And after you build your a few websites, it doesn't need to be a lot. Um, there, like the time spent for learning React, in my opinion, is a lot. Is like three months max to to get into an intermediate level. If you have, if you need more time, then it's fine. It's totally fine. You have the time of the world to to to, to learn it. Um, but I'm saying, in average, most people will take about three months to at least to get in an, at a point where they can build a website on their own. And uh, um, after getting to the point where you know something like React Router DOM, I would try building apps that um, use some sort of API. So with that, you'll learn stuff like um, how to fetch data, um, how to display data. Um, you also learn a new hook, which is the use effect hook, which will allow you to make API requests immediately when the page, uh, like when you refresh the page. Um, you'll learn how to basically create a website that consumes an API. And that's many websites out there. That's enough to create a lot of websites that you've seen already. Um, it's just basically consuming an API and dealing with the data however you want. That will help you a lot. So I feel like if you're at this point, um, I would focus on working on this. And if you build a cool website using a cool API, it can even be a resume project that you put um, for looking while you're looking for like an entry level position. Some really nice um, APIs that you can use are for example, um, like a, a crypto API, um, some sort of weather API, maybe like the SpaceX API. I remember I did a project with the SpaceX API where like 
I just displayed the dates in which the rockets would go into orbit. Um, that kind of stuff. It's very simple, don't overcomplicate stuff. Just learn how to work with APIs and that should be fine. At this point, you're probably getting good with React or at least getting used to a lot of the the like basic stuff from React. So what it would, um, and you're probably dealing with issues, for example, um, like how to manage your states in your application. You're probably dealing with a lot of states, um, having to pass them through props and suddenly your components have thousands of props because you're trying to pass everything, every state into it. So at this point, you're gonna have to learn a state management library. Now there's many out there, and the one I recommend you learn first is the context API, which already comes with React. Now this will teach you another hook, which is the use context hook, and it's very useful. Honestly, you can even use it um, for years. You don't need to learn anything else other than this. Obviously, um, there's other alternatives out there, very famous ones like Redux, um, and I've, I've talked in the past about Redux and my opinions about it. I feel like if you want to learn Redux, it is a great tool. It is amazing for projects, but if you don't want to learn it, it's okay as well. The Context API is really good. And um, I would just say that at this point in your journey, you should be getting used to learning, um, to using state management libraries into your project. After you get used to a, con a state management library, it gets to the point where um, I feel like all the concepts from now on will not be in order. So what I mean by that is that um, anything from now on, um, it doesn't matter which order you pick them, like in which order you study um, the concepts, because everything will be based on stuff you already know. There's no like chain of, of chain reaction. So for example, to learn state management, you need to learn states first. So there's nothing like this, right? Everything is kind of separated, but united in the fact that all of them require you to know the basics. However, it doesn't mean that um, you shouldn't be learning them. For example, I would recommend learning every single hook that is core to React. And I do have a video explaining them. If you guys want to check it out, I really love that video. Um, I, I go over every single hook. I don't exactly mean that you, you need to know all of them, but I just think that you should at least get an idea of what they are and when to use them. Um, there's about eight, I believe, eight or nine. Um, but most notably, I would feel comfortable with the use state hook, the use effect hook, the use ref hook, the use context hook, and probably stuff like use memo or use callback. Those are really important ones. I'm probably forgetting one that is also important, but I would just take a look at the list and get used to all of them because you're definitely gonna encounter a situation where you need to use them. Other notable stuff would be starting to think about stuff like um, project structure, folder structure, how to organize your code better, how to make, create a project that is maintainable, um, also integrating other technologies, how to create a full stack React app. All this stuff comes right now because you're already comfortable with a lot of stuff that allows you to simply go off in your own path and start learning stuff on your own. And finally, I would say that one thing you can you should do to get to the next step and become a better developer at the end of your journey, or at least at the point you are right now, would be to get some sort of job experience. And I definitely undervalued that. I definitely felt like that was an underrated step um, because I felt like you could learn everything on your own when you technically can theoretically um, however, it's not realistic at all. Before I interned at Twitch during the summer, I had never encountered some real life situations uh, that I encountered during my job. And those are situations that you will only encounter if you are working at a real app that will be used by a lot of people. So definitely get some sort of experience. I'm not saying you gotta have a job. I'm not saying you need to have a job at Fang or um, even a job at all. You can have an internship like I had or uh, an apprenticeship program, anything that will put you in the situation where you need to write code for a company. Um, anything like that will help a lot because you will just naturally become a better developer. And I feel like when you get to that point, um, you shouldn't worry that much um, about what you're learning next. Instead, you should be worrying about what you're doing at the moment and absorbing as much information you, as you gain from your experience. So that's that's kind of what I wanted to say at the end because I felt like it was a turning point for me. When I interned at Twitch, I felt like I, I learned an absurd amount of stuff 
and it definitely made me a much better developer in React. I'm also going to list out um, some concepts that I didn't mention in the video that I feel like you guys should at least take a look at, try to learn it. Um, it will definitely give you some, like n learning more stuff is never negative, right? It's always going to be beneficial. So those stuff um, are a little bit more complex. Um, I'm, I'm recommending you to learn them if you're at this point where you're trying to get a job or you're trying to learn stuff um, post learning state management. So if you want to check it out, it will be in the description together with a link to go for you to go check out brilliant, which again, thank you for sponsoring this video. And yeah, that's, that's basically it. If you guys enjoyed it, leave a like down below and comment what you want to see next subscribe because I'm posting two times a week and I'll massively appreciate it. If you have any opinions about what I mentioned in this video, leave a comment down below. I love discussing with you guys. I love hearing different opinions and it would be amazing to, to, to get um, like feedback from you guys. So with that in mind, I really hope you guys enjoyed it and I see you guys next time.